Mm -hmm. Lord Fuller. Uh -huh. There was one of the greatest guitar players, greatest singers, and those records of his, mm. just unbelievable. And, you know, his style was so great, you know. Um, well, he had that kind of Piedmont, North Carolina yes, thing going. the syncopation of stuff. So it's... Um, My money, what more can I do? You're a good little gal, but you just won't be true. Every day, my mind, when I draw my pay, you're the evil hearted gal, get drunk and throw it away. Um, break that down a little bit. Okay. Um, and people at home should know that Blind Boy Fuller was Brownie McGee's main influence. That's right. Blind Boy Fuller would play outside the Chesterfield tobacco warehouses when when the shift change came, and he'd make you know coins from the guys who worked there, and he had his spot. And one day he heard a harmonica player across the street whooping and hollering and. He could sense that the crowd was not with him so much that day, so he combined forces and they actually uh, made a few recordings together before his death. That was Sonny Terry. Yes, yeah, Sonny Terry. Yeah, yeah. And Sonny Terry, uh, you know, was so powerful a player and singer that uh, when Brownie McGee replaced Blind Boy Fuller, they just maintained that that du duo for. 60 years or yeah, something. I yeah. Believe. Yeah, well, I heard that when Brownie was first getting his recording career going, uh, Blind But Fuller died in, I think, 39. Yes. And uh, they he had had a couple of really big hits, and the companies wanted to exploit that. Oh. And Brownie could sound like him. He could play like him. Yeah. It sounds something like Blind But Fuller. So they um, they just convinced him to call himself Blind But Fuller number two. Wow. He never liked that No, at all. I wouldn't think so. He didn't like it at all. But... He did it, and he had a couple of hits with that, wow. and then um, then he went on and, and went back to his his own name and yeah and continued on from there. But uh, well, he had a brother or a cousin named Sticks McGee. Stick, yeah, that was his brother. Yeah, and yeah. he was phenomenal yeah. too, and yeah. he played harmonica on a rack. Did he? Yeah, uh -huh. I got to see him play. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. So getting back to the Blind Boy Fuller yeah. tune, that uh, okay now that's. Let's just look at that there. There's an a, start with an a, that's an A seventh chord there. Right. Yeah, and then you E seventh, D seventh, diminished, yeah, yeah, A diminished. Yeah, that's a neat little lick. That that's a, a signature lick of Blind Boy Fuller. Yeah, do that again a little slower if you can. Yeah, so you're sliding down and then back up again. Yeah. Right, and if the players at home aren't familiar with that D seventh, that it's just a D seventh with with the. Um, F sharp in the bass instead of on the first string, and you've got an open. You open your first string, and you can hammer on with your first That's right. finger. Mm -hmm. and that's an A seventh up there, like a D D seventh shape. Right, exactly. So this song kind of is like key to the highway, Crow Jane, those, something like those that. Kind exactly, of yeah. Changes. So it's it's not a strict so twelve bar. Like, it's more of an eight bar kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. So some of those same turnarounds show up in different songs. Yes, yeah. they do. And uh, you know, I I've 
had a chance to work with some of the greatest guitar players ever, maybe. And I've tried to glean a little bit of something from everybody, but I wind up making it sound like me somehow, no matter <laughs> how hard I try. Well, I think that's the key for anybody. I yeah. think it should sound like, you know, you imitate, you imitate, you imitate, and then at some point in your life, it becomes You realize you. that you can't be them. <laughs> right, yeah. But if you imitate from a lot of different people, and it comes together kind of in a, a stew, and you yes. hopefully it's going to come out your own right. thing. Um, yeah, play that tune one more time. Let's just see those changes where it goes A to E. Starts on A. Okay. So, um... Yeah, that, that, that little thing starting up there, yeah. that's kind of like an... That's still an A chord, stretching it up to... Yeah. And then back down. I give you my money. What more can I do? You're a good little gal, but you just won't be true. Every day, my mind, when I draw my pay, you're the evil hearted gal getting drunk and throw it over. Yeah, I hate my mind. Shucks. I used to be all regular, now I got to be your dog. I'll be your dog. You don't dog me around. So I'll be your dog, woman. I'm gone from town to town. Your, your thumb is kind of keeping pretty much a steady yeah. bass going on this one. And you're using your first and second fingers, I see that to pick up. Important to keep that rhythm going. I yeah. think that's so so much. Even when it even when it stops from time to time, the the feel stays there. Yes. You know, and that's the important thing too. And I think that's that's kind of when I hear young people trying to play the, the style, and one of the things that seems to always get in their way is getting that that forceful rhythm, which which you can even stop playing and you can feel the rhythm yeah. going. You know, um, but you know you've got that. Um, well, I learned that, you know, if you're going to be a solo, make enough sound to keep everybody's attention, you know, and mm -hmm. at least, you know, with the, with the material that I love to do, uh, it became very important to have that bottom end and that the, the ry rhythm part so pronounced that if you hit some uh, licks on the top, it's going to sound even better. Right. And, um, you know, I was very... Uh, intense, you know, in terms, you know, when I began playing, I'd close my eyes and just go for it, you know. And <laughs> I just had to do it somehow, and I uh, uh, hope I've, over the years, learned a little more sophistication and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and not just going crazy. But uh, Now, do you, do you know whether, when you're playing the harp, whether your accompaniment changes at all? Or is, it, you know, or is it pretty much I like you're singing? Really, yeah, I, it's, it comes... From a place that uh, I, I'm being two people. I'm being the harmonica player, the guitar player, and the singer. I guess three people. And uh, maybe my foot has its own thing too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe four. But the, um, you know, I, I began playing the harmonica at the same time I began the guitar. And so I learned to, it, it's, it's like, I guess, playing the piano when the left hand and the right hand become independent, you know, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and you don't really have to think of that coordination, it just sort of comes. And uh, right. uh, the, the, uh, the harmonica, I, you know, got to a point where I could be the harmonica player and, mm -hmm. you know, became set, separate. 